Today I'm gonna show you how to turn green rocks like this into solid copper like this. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? <laughs> That's right, so come on, let's go! So we're working with carbonates today, copper carbonates. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert these into oxides, and then from there we're gonna reduce them into metallic copper. And to help that process along, we're gonna be using carbon or charcoal. I'm also gonna use thinner, I'm gonna use flux, and I'm also gonna use some bone ash. And I'm gonna show you how that all works here in just a minute. 470 grams of copper carbonate. Now, whenever I do all my mixing over here, it's gonna be by volume, not by weight, okay? Keep that in mind as we move along. And if you stick around, I'm gonna tell you where you can get all these fluxes, and I'm gonna tell you where you can get the furnace kits, too. All right, we're gonna be using two different types of crucibles today. Now, if you guys wanna have fun at home, you can take some copper carbonate like this, add some sulfuric acid to it, which turns it into what? Copper sulfate. And then you can add metal to it, like iron, or even aluminum foil and it'll drop that copper right out. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use a furnace, get it up to 2,000 degrees because copper melts at what? That's right, 1,984 degrees. And luckily for me, it's hot out here right now, so I don't get too hot with this furnace. Now everything that you see me working with today, I got from Patrick over at USA Gold Kilns. And I'll leave a link down below. He's a super great guy and he's super smart and he wrote his own book on fire assay and if you can beat that. Now for the fluxes and for the thinner, we got that from Steve Hamilton over at Make Your Own Gold Bars. And he'll even give you a discount for mentioning our name. Not only that, he sells these K&M crushers right here. And that's what we use to powderize all that ore. Now a big mistake I see a lot of people out there making is they go ahead and they put their charcoal and their copper carbonate in into a crucible and then they put a cap on it. But what they don't do is they don't put any bone ash around the top of this lip here. And the reason why you do that is because if you don't, guess what? When you take this thing out, you're not gonna be able to get this off the top. It's literally gonna fuse to the top. And also you put bone ash on the top of your pedestal so this doesn't stick to the bottom and you sprinkle a little in the bottom of your furnace just in case you have a spill. That's right, I'm gonna have my bush baked beans too. This is the secret ingredient. What do you think is gonna convert over to copper oxide faster? If I leave it in these chunky forms or if I powder it up? Leave your comment down below before I do it and we'll just see how many of you out there are fart smellers. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant smart fellers. <laughs> All right, I got two more batches. I got one here and I got one in here and this guy's ready to go. So what I like to do is fill them almost over the way to the top. Now remember, this is in flux. It's not gonna boil over, okay? We're just gonna get it hot enough to turn it into copper oxide, okay? We're not getting all funky crazy with it. We made a video on how the ancients used to do this same technique using nothing more than a hole in the ground, a metal pipe, and a hair dryer. That's right. I'm gonna leave the link to that video right there. Click on it, watch it. It's an older video, but it'll give you the fundamentals on how you can do this at home with little to next to nothing. <laughs> Get mighty hot in there. Oh, it's hot. That's real hot. Let's go check it out. Ooh, can you see the copper? I can. Yeah, what do you see, huh? Tons and tons of copper, that's what I see. Nice. All right, now we're gonna try the powder and we're gonna see what that looks like when it comes out. And don't forget to smash that like button. Smash it hard. Now when you start seeing embers coming out of there, that usually means that it's done. It's hot, it's super hot, baby. Look at the copper burning off the top. You see that? Isn't that cool? Oh, that's so hot. Oh, look at that. It's done. Oh, that copper powder. Oh, there's a whole bunch of little tiny copper in the bottom. All right, let's wash this off and see what we get. Bunch of little copper nuggies. See that? There's a nuggie right there. Nuggie. And see all that fine copper powder? 
right up there and it's all copper powder which is no big surprise so it seems that you get better quality copper on a fine grind but less material and then when you throw it in chunky you get a lot of material now granted a lot of those chunks are not pure copper so i think to be more efficient you would do a fine ground on it than throw it in chunky but we're going to throw it in chunky because it's faster and it looks prettier huh so that's what we're going to do and then we're going to turn it into a giant bar what do you think about that huh i'm sorry what i couldn't hear you my name is Jeff. All right, we got it all cooked up. It's right here. 391 grams. Now, you remember what we got in the beginning, right? Before you drop them pants, think of this. Now, we're going to take this, and I know there's a lot of impurities in it, and we're going to reduce it down to a liquid and make a bar out of it. Ooh, what do you think the final weight's going to be then, huh? Come on, I got any takers out there? Leave your comment down below. Get our Chapman Flux put in there. Ooh, messy. Get my thinner put in there. Yeah, that way it pours like water. I like using thinner anytime I'm melting gold, silver, any kind of metal because it doesn't get gloopy no matter what. It'll come out like water. Ooh, that's a nice one. Look at that. Look at that copper. Ooh, that's pretty looking. Oh yeah, he's pretty, huh? Pretty little button. Not bad. Here's the bar. I still gotta clean it up. What is that? I got a, finally got a copper bar out of that. See that? Not bad looking. Have to clean them up and see what we got. Well, there they are. There's the copper bar. And, oh, that's still hot. And there's the other cone. I don't know why, but I can always get my cones to look really, really good, but I can't get a bar to look good for nothing. Now, if you guys have any tips or tricks on how to make these bars look good, leave me a comment down below because I've tried and tried and they look like ugly loaves of bread. So, all right, let's weigh these things up and see how much we got. So we got 144 grams of copper from that rock. And if you like what you saw today, you better smash that like button, son. Smash it real hard.